Good afternoon. I'm Captain Morgan Barron uh, from uh, Madigan Army Medical Center in Tacoma. I uh, appreciate the opportunity here to present our work on uh, smartphone-based mobile thermal imaging and assessment of tourniquets. Uh, we have nothing to disclose. Our uh, project was funded by an AAMTI grant, and the results are and opinions are our own, not reflected with DOD. So hemorrhage, it is the, the most common cause of potentially preventable injury uh, or preventable death in both civilian and military trauma. Uh, in retrospective reviews of the recent conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, 14% of soldiers uh, died from isolated extremity hemorrhage. Uh, this additionally also has a significant cause of preventable morbidity for these patients who survive. So to manage extremity injuries, we utilize tourniquets. They're major pre-hospital life-saving interventions, and they reliably stop hemorrhage when they're used appropriately. Uh, thus, they need proper training and standardized protocols to ensure that that takes place. So several issues have been highlighted in the literature uh, about tourniquets, where particularly Unlu et al. noted in a military population that 69%, only 69%, properly applied and tightened tourniquets. Again, this, this even went further with Dr. Craig et al. and noted that 28% of patients arriving to a, a, a combat support hospital had adequately applied tourniquet, or had inadequately applied tourniquets from the field. Craig continued to uh, characterize several of the reasons why tourniquets can be rendered ineffective. Uh, this can be due to a uh, soldier placing a tourniquet on themselves uh, and having muscle relaxation following application, rebleeding with volume resuscitation, and fluid and lymph extrusion uh, from that area. So this gives us both an opportunity and, um, and a problem here that we need to find a way to, for to formally assess uh, the initial placement of the tourniquet as well as continuously monitor the tourniquet after it's been in place. So this, we propose the use of thermal imaging. Uh, thermal imaging has, has come a long way in its technology. Uh, they have now uh, devices that you can attach, as you can see here, to your smartphone. Um, and they give you a rapid assessment of environmental thermal profiles, of, including humans and animals. Uh, and you can get spot point temperatures. The important thing here is that you can assess a tourniquet with both qualitative and quantitative data. So our hypothesis was is that mobile phone-based thermal imaging would provide a rapid, accurate, and reliable assessment of peripheral extremity perfusion, and that it would be easily interpreted by the novice user. So what we did is we took 10 swine, we randomized them into two groups, no hemorrhage and a 40% hemorrhage. We then applied bilateral lower extremity tourniquets and subjected them to a series of experiments using thermal imaging. The first experiment, we took both tourniquets, tightened them all the way, absence of Doppler signals, and ran the experiment for 30 minutes, taking pictures at intervals. The second experiment is we took both tourniquets, tightened them all the way, and then let one of those tourniquets down just enough so you could get Doppler signals uh, past the tourniquet. The third experiment was the same as the second, except that we did this in blackout conditions. So just to orient you to some thermal images you'll be seeing here in a second, is your hotter images are going to be uh, ones that are in the white, pink, light red range, as you can see here noted on the animal's core. Um, and what you're going to see in this video is I'm applying bilateral lower extremity tourniquets. These are adequately placed. There's no blood flow going distal. And I, what I want you to note is the distal extremities and watch the color slowly wash out. It's a time-lapse video over 10 minutes. You'll see they start with light reds and there's some pink in there. And around the edges, it starts to get yellow and progress further and further. Now you see that there was plenty of uh, light colors starting off, and now it's moved on to yellow, cooler colors. So that's the first experiment. Pull tourniquets tight. Second experiment is we had one inadequately placed tourniquet and one adequately placed tourniquet. So just note on these lower extremities, you'll see that they're very well perfused limbs. Watch for this limb here on the left. Uh, this, this one has the adequately placed tourniquet. So at five minutes, it starts to get a little bit cooler. It's noticeable. But then 10, 20, and 30 minutes later, it's very noticeable. The skin temperature changes. So we took these images and presented them to several blinded evaluators in kind of a crowdsourcing fashion. We uh, presented to 62 different people at various training levels. These were attendings down to medical students. Nobody had any prior experience with thermal imaging, and we gave everyone a brief five-minute familiarization and a few example slides to work with. We showed them this. This is an example of what we should gave them. We said, here's an image in the middle. Which tourniquet is the one that's tight, right or left? We gave them references. They said, this is what it looks like when they're completely loose. This is what it looks like when they're tight. 
And this is the one that indeed was the Titan tourniquet. So in, in our results, our, our animal model, uh, we took a look at our post-hemorrhage uh, animals. And so we compared the animals that had undergone the 40% hemorrhage, and those that had the hemorrhage were exhibiting signs of hemorrhagic shock. They were significantly more hypotensive, tachycardic, and anemic than their non-hemorrhage counterparts. And then getting into the quantitative data that we obtained from the thermal imaging is you'll find that from baseline to the full 30 minutes of each experiment is you'll see that there's a steady and reliable change in objective thermal imaging uh, data. And then when you compare the adequately placed tourniquets to the inadequately placed tourniquets, you'll find that adequately placed tourniquets have a temperature change of 6 to 7 degrees centigrade. But if there was any Doppler flow after, past that tourniquet, very minimal temperature change was noted. And then in our, to our qualitative assessment, utilizing this blinded evaluator analysis, at our earliest two time points that we took, the five and 10 minute time points, you'll see that we had high rates of accuracy to the point that even 100% was noted in hemorrhage. This remained true also for our other variable, the lighting conditions, whereas again, five and 10 minute time points, very high rates of accuracy, and each time the time points in increased, the accuracy improved. So in summary, hemorrhage animals in our model exhibited hemorrhagic shock physiology. Thermal imaging was, uh, provided accurate identification of tourniquets, and this was easily identified by the novice observer with very limited familiarization to the technology. It also provides an accurate and objective temperature measurement that can reliably differentiate a tourniquet status. So the limitations, this is a porcine model. The pigs have a different limb proportion to that of a human. Uh, this was done in a controlled environment. We had no trauma-related variables, things like temperature changes. Our temperature was consistently controlled. Uh, there was no clothing involved. There was no mangled or amputated extremities uh, in the study. So in conclusion, we can conclude that mobile thermal imaging technology is an accurate, reliable, and simple modality to assess limb perfusion. It can differentiate between the presence and absence of flow without being affected by hemorrhage or lighting conditions. So we feel this has significant potential to be a useful adjunct in proper tourniquet placement and limb perfusion assessment. This actually has immediate battlefield and transport utility as well as plenty of potential for other applications for perfusion assessment. Thank you for the opportunity to present and I'll take any questions. Any questions from the audience? So I, I have one question from the podium here. So in your conclusions, in your abstract, you're talking about uh, this would be a good technology to demonstrate uh, assessing limb perfusion. That's also for rapid and reliable identification of an adequately placed tourniquet. Yes, sir. And while, while your images were very striking um, in the field, you know, under fire or austere environment, do you really think that uh, the, the thermal imaging is going to change whether or not hemorrhage is controlled? So uh, I, I think we do. So I mean, it's too early to really say we haven't. That's actually a lot of our what our uh, ongoing studies are going to be about, um, and especially in translating it over to the human side. But the ra the rapid um, assessment is, is is these temperature changes are evident at very early time points. At, within five minutes, you can tell somebody with very limited familiarization to the technology can tell a very quick period of time. Um, and we specifically utilize this tool because it is perfect for taking to the austere environment. Blackout conditions, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's a small little portable device that you can put right on a smartphone. And so then what you can do is you can have a medic or somebody who's monitoring a tourniquet say, take a look at intermittent time periods and say, this, is, this tourniquet is inadequately placed, retighten. There's perfusion present past the point of uh, the tourniquet, and it needs to be tightened back up and prevent hemorrhage from there.